What's up, guys and gals, and welcome back to Fibbity-Bobbity-Boobity. Uh, I still don't know how to say the name of the game. I could probably figure it out. Ah, uh, you know. Splattercat being Splattercat, it is what it is. Uh, we're gonna go and look at waystones today in this game. That's pretty much it. I think we've basically built the stuff there is to build. I couldn't get the roof part to work like I wanted it to work, like really badly. But sometimes when you believe, it's just not enough. I've got my own little area over here, and I could definitely put in a floor or something like that. However, considering wood isn't really at a premium and it's not hard to come by, will he attack my walls? I'm curious about this. Are you attacking my walls right now? I will murder you. Better. That's a premium wall right there. I paid $4.99 for that wall. You better believe it. That's a wall that's not open to the peasantry. Oh, I'm going to... I'm... I'm gonna beat the rocks off of you. You better come back over here. I feel cold. Not as cold as this dwarf's about to feel. That's right. That's what I thought. He's feeling that cold hand of death right now. Creeping in on him. That damage was not worth it, though. Keep eating mushrooms. I want my health to constantly be in a state of, like, regeneration. Uh, the moon is going down, and as I understand the way things work on our planet, when that goes down, the sun should come up. Then again, there might be some realm for variance there. In colder climates, it's not uncommon for it to be nighttime like all the time as you get further further north or south uh, they get to a point where there's like endless day and endless night for certain seasons that seems weird though like I don't know how you would adjust to that like I guess you just get blackout blinds or whatever if it's endless day and if it's endless night I could deal with that perfectly fine I worked a night job for a long time and so I'm used to only being awake when it's nighttime like it, it makes sense to me like I don't think I saw the Sun for upwards of six months I occasionally saw it but it was pretty much just like when the Sun was up I was sleeping, and then during the nighttime I was at work, or like doing other things, and so it was important to me that I lived in like a metropolitan area where things are open 24 hours a day, otherwise I couldn't get groceries and stuff like that, it was a pain. It, it was hard to work around it when I had that particular job, had me like normally my work was from like, from like 7 to like 2 or 3 a.m., and then normally, depending on the season, if it was like summer I'd see sunlight. If it was winter, though, I just got used to the fact that it was just nighttime all the time for me. Is that, like, a bigger one over there? That one looks a little bit bigger, but I can't really tell. Must be. Nighttime is pretty long in this game. I need this sun to come up. Where's my sun at? There's a little bit of sunlight starting to creep on in. I'm coming to the conclusion that it may not be possible to actually just, like, stick to doing things during the day. Uh, it seems possible. I'm gonna smack this dude right here until he falls over. And then I'm gonna run out of materials to murder him with. I'm going to try not to take a hit right there. Ooh, he's got more HP than I expected. Why are you not dead yet? Good lord. That guy had a chin on him. That guy took way more hits than all the other ones. Uh, let's go back down to the shore down here. Oh, it's because I was using a flint axe last time. That's what it was. My stone axe is a little bit busted too. And so we're actually out of wood. So I may need to scavenge wood out of a forest somewhere. I wanted to see what happens if I hit this waypoint. <sighs> Like, can I travel? Huh. That one stayed lit. So maybe something happens when we light them all up? I don't know where they're all at, but they're all over the place. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to focus on that. I think that'll work out. I'm going to try and chop down a tree before things get any worse. My axe is about to break. And so if I can't get a little bit of wood out of this situation, we are going to struggle. So yeah, there it is right there. Uh, do I have enough stuff to make another stone axe? I do. Yay. Well, that is a good, good thing. Good, 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 good tree chopping. There we go. Got a little bit more wood right there. I wanted to look around for more flint. It seems to be over by water a lot of the time. And so if we could pick up like two or three more flint, we'd be able to make a flint axe, which uh, I think is way more efficient. There we go. The reason you'd be finding flint down by water sources is because it doesn't erode at the same rate that other things erode. It'd be a little bit more frequent. So if you've got something like, let's light this guy up. So there we go. I'm going to light this guy up over here too. It's going to take a little bit of a walk to get over there. But luckily the sprint is actually fairly reliable in this game. A lot of survival games you can't sprint for very long. This one you can sprint for a little while, but it doesn't seem like a gratuitous amount. Uh, there's another one right there. I'll probably just keep an eye out. Just sort of like look around and as I see them I'll go and activate them. It'll get a little bit more difficult down that we're when we're when we're out by like foresty areas where I have no line of sight. But I don't think it'll be that bad. Uh, I think we should be able to mash our way through. But yeah, flint is very, very, very hard. Uh, flint is quite hard. It's basically metamorphosed chert. 
which already chert is pretty tough stone too. You tend to find chert a lot of the time bound by water sources because water has no effect on it. Water has no effect on it, whereas all of the other chemical constituents of the stone will slowly get ow run over by a giant log. Now the other uh, the other chemical constituents of the stone will get slowly eroded away just by friction over time, or some of them are also um, soluble. And so, like, the calcium carbonate parts of it will start to wither away. Things like micas and stuff like that are very, very soft, and they should wither away over time as well. And it shouldn't be too big of a challenge. But stuff like quartz. Quartz stays in there for a long time. Iron, it tends to oxidize. Magnesium can stay in there for a little while. But it also has the same problem where it oxidizes. And so, anyways... All that stuff, that's why by water, you're going to find flint. That's fairly accurate. You're going to find flinty and quartz-like stones next to water a lot of the time because either the river or the flow of water is just going to nonstop beat it down until nothing's left. But the stuff that does not go away in water... I don't see any other... I don't see any other flint around here, and I don't see any other waystones. Uh, part of the thing is, oh my god, there's more islands over there. What is that? Oh, it's a mushroom. Never mind. I thought maybe it was iron or something. At this point, I am hungry for things that are going to increase my tech tree. But because the game's a demo, I don't know what else is in the game or how far this can all go. Like, I don't know what there is to discover around. I don't see any more waystones. It might be a wise idea to maybe get high ground. I wonder if the waystones are just going to let you to teleport around or something like that. Or they give you, like, optional spawn points or something when you die. I'm curious to see what happens when we light them all up, though. Like, maybe that's the end of the game, possibly. Like, that's the win condition that you're moving towards, and as you activate more of them, the world gets more and more dangerous. I was thinking maybe I could bust up these rocks over here, but I wasted an entire axe just testing it to see if I could smack it. I'm also curious about what I can do with deer. Like, with the deer, is there a way for me to... Can I bap a deer? Is that possible? Like, say I run down one of these udus. Like... If it dies, can I get, like, antler or something like that that gives me more options or maybe more clothing or something? Ah, I couldn't get him. I wonder if there's, like, a ranged weapon in-game, like a sling or something like that, that I can use to take him out. I've been picking up stuff all over the place, but I haven't seen anything too crazy just yet. I probably shouldn't waste my axe on this. Do I have a club? I don't. I need to make one then. This is going to take damned forever to kill this dude with no weapon. Come on. Yep. I'm staying on you, man. I'm staying on you. I don't back off for nothing. You started this fight. Now we're gonna finish it. Yep. Don't take the high ground in this game. Uh, it'll get you into trouble. The high ground is not where you want to be. Sometimes your swings go over the top of their heads. Uh, let's go with... I guess I'll craft that on up. I don't think there's much that I can do with a torch as of right now. Give me two clubs just so I have more of them. I have backup weapons, just a bandolier of clubs on my back. And then we got some more mushrooms right there. Some bigger mushrooms on that side. But so far, I haven't seen anything that popped in that looks... What is that? Hold up. What is this thing? Well, apparently it's guarded by dwarves, so maybe it has something awesome inside of it. It's the mines! The mines of Muria! Alright, so we'll grab that right there. And what is this? Does it do anything? Or is it just, we got like Stonehenge over here. Wonder if it's just an environmental thing or if it does something. Can I craft anything new while I stand next to it? Doesn't look like it to me. So if I can't craft anything new, what does it do? Hmm. Maybe it's just there for right now. Maybe it's a placeholder and it'll do something later on. It's cool, though. At least there's environmental objects around. At least there's something interesting for us to look at while we're running around the map. I think we may have reached, like, the end of the gameplay, though. These look kind of like... Let me, let me see if I can chop these. I can, but they don't drop anything. I was going to say, they've got kind of the look of something that might be able to be used as fibers or whatever, but I guess not. What about these little dandelions over here? Can I do anything with these? No. Can't do anything with the dandelions. Those are just kind of little pop-up areas. All right, I understand. I get it. It's all good. I am unafraid. We shall continue to adventure, for we are Viking man, and nothing strikes fear into our hearts. Ooh, there's a castle over there. Ooh. Castle seems like a good place where there might be, like, armor, or, like, weapons, or, like, a sword, or, like, a bow, or something like that. Yeah, buddy. Oh, we've got one of those surter things over there. 
Well, there's a bunch of them. Is there anything special over there that would, like, reason why there's so many of them? There is. There's something laying on the ground right there. I wonder what that is. Ow. Apparently, I'm just going to be on fire today. Uh, take cover. We're going to get behind some rocks. I want to know what that is. It looks like a breastplate or something. I don't know. It could be anything. Oh, he fired one through the rocks right there. I want them to roughly be attacking at the same time. So, like, I'm going to dive in and get a couple licks off. And then as it gets safer, is that iron on the ground right there? Oh, I think they dropped loot. Hold on. Oh, it is. It's iron. What do I do with iron? Ooh, there's more to the game. We can make a stone cutter? What the shit is that? A meteorite? I can make a forge. Ooh. Nice. Okay. So we need to make ourselves safe for the night right now. We gotta make ourselves safe. We don't have a choice. I gotta do this thing. Oh, I'm interested now. I like what's going on. I thought the game was over, but it wasn't. There was more to it. I just had to kill the right stuff. Uh, we gotta make a fire, like, right now. Otherwise, the night is going to get long and shitty. And so, let's wait. I got the flint axe right now. I would have liked to have made it to the castle by nightfall, but I guess, you know, sometimes you don't get what you want. I'll more than likely, after this episode, when we do our exploration, what I'll probably try to do is I may take us back out and see if maybe... Maybe I'll try to break a flint axe, too, upside one of these rocks a little bit later. Seems like it wouldn't be a terrible plan. For right now, though, all I care about is we need a campfire so that we don't freeze to death. So there we go, campfire. Uh, we've got mushrooms left over. I need to keep getting my health back. We have eight iron sitting around. I can't do anything with that right now. That's okay. I'm not going to stress it too much. Uh, during the night, if I can, I'm going to try and chop some of these little trees down, get some freebie wood out. But that's pretty much my goal for the night. I'll see you all in the morning. Morning time is upon us, my friends. Uh, we're going to go out and explore for right now. Uh, there are some critters walking around out here, but I don't think it's anything that we can't handle. Well, I know exactly where I'm going. We're going over to that castle over there, and then we're going to build the forge, and we're going to build all the cool stuff that we haven't been able to build, and at least see what there is available. Now, fair warning, I only have time to batch record a couple of these games at a time, because... It's just how my workflow works nowadays. And so I'm, I'm explaining this to you all so you'll understand. Uh, this game does not save. It's also always on. So there's no way for me to pause it and just out-tab it or save and come back later. So there may be breaks in the gameplay with this title as we get further along. I mean, it just might happen. Like, I gotta close the game at some point and do other things. And so if you find out that, like, maybe we aren't where we were last time when you see an episode... Don't worry, it's not that big of a deal, it's just the game is always on for right now, and so there's no way for me to pause or do anything else. Like, I can't really leave the computer or anything like that, because you'll starve to death while you do it. Uh, fair warning, though. It's one of those games that's in early access development, so... Hopefully, they'll add, like, a dedicated, like, single player with a save and everything else later on down the line. I kind of want to go kill the fire guys over there again. But the meteorite didn't come back, and last time that almost killed us. We got our asses whooped the last time we tried to go over there. We didn't get whooped that badly. Like, we came out on top, as a Viking should. But at the same time, it took some of our resources, and it took me almost all night to get my health back up. So, is there anything inside that? Can I even get inside of it? Oh, I can't even get inside of it, though? Weak. I was so excited about going inside of there. I wanted to see what was inside the... Ooh, a waystone. That, that salves the wound a little bit. I'll take a waystone. That's good enough. I don't know what the hell a waystone does still, but I want it. There's also some big lumpy stone out there in the middle of the water. I mean, it should be fairly easy in this game. I don't know how big the world is, but it does seem to keep on going. I don't know if the world is, like, rust-sized or, like, arc-sized. Like, how big is the world in this game? Because it feels like I've been running for a hot minute. And we found our way out to some really interesting localities. Um, there's something foggy over here that I wanted to look at too. I noticed it last night while I was running around I was actually in the throes of combat with those things over there And so I didn't notice that there's like a little Foggy Glen right here. I'm assuming that maybe later on this will be useful for something Like I'm noticing that there's a lot of landmarks around and the landmarks don't have anything in them just yet But they're placed so that as you're adventuring around you can almost always see one landmark from another landmark uh, that's actually a fairly common game design uh, tactic. They did that. They actually broke down the maps. And uh, somebody mo broke down the maps for Zelda Breath of the Wild. 
And actually, in there, there's pointers that Nintendo has where, specifically, they wanted players, when they're at this point, they wanted people to see this, this, and this cool thing. And then from those points, there's lines that lead out, and those are intended sight lines for the player. And that's a very advanced development strategy, and I don't know if it's what they're doing here. I just noticed that, like, normally you can see one landmark from another landmark, and they kind of point you around so that you see interesting things as you're going through the game. And you're like, oh, well, I see an interesting thing over here. I see an interesting thing over there. I guess we'll go out and we'll explore and we'll find more interesting things. Uh, we got a waystone on this side, so I'll go ahead and take care of that. If the waystones can actually be sprinkled in the middle of all these places, though, it does kind of raise the question how I'm going to find them all, or if there's even any point to finding them all. You touch the cold stone surface and you think of home. I still don't know how to use this. My guess is that maybe later on you can build some kind of crafting station or something that allows you to maybe teleport in between stuff. As another thing to Roger in about, uh, to actually register in with you about, overnight I actually used up an entire flint axe hitting one of those big rocks over there, and also used up an axe hitting one of the little rocks, and neither one of them broke, and so I don't think we can actually farm iron that way. I think we might only be able to get it through like combat and assorted tactics like that. Uh... There's a waystone right there. I'm gonna go get it. We've got like a foggy mist right now that's keeping it so that I can't see landmarks or anything like that. It looks like those stones right there might be the remnants of maybe a building or something, or maybe that's just another waystone. I don't know. Keep activating them. Keep turning on all the lights. Our power bill this month is gonna be atrocious, but we will have glowing rune stones at all times. A monomarth will play. The heads will bang. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if the map is randomly generated and things are just scattered around, or if it's the same every single time. That'd be something that I'd be interested to know. I don't know if this game is procedural. It doesn't feel procedural. Like, looking around, normally there's, like, telltale signs when you're playing a game that it's procedural and, like, it's being generated kind of at the beginning of a title. I'm pretty sure it's an established map just because the map design. Uh, there's certain things in certain places, and I don't see procedural design putting things in places like that. Uh, consistently like I don't know it, it feels like there would be weird map anomalies and stuff like that if it was procedurally generated and I haven't seen that so far so I don't think we have to worry about it I don't know where I want to set up like I don't know I told you guys I was gonna get stuff done by the end of this episode so I figure we might as well do it let's do it down here I'm about to lose my save anyways because I gotta go run errands and unfortunately the game's always on and doesn't save uh there's a tower over there I'm okay with that Let's go check out this tower, and we'll build, we'll build our base next to that, okay? Oh, no! Apparently your health goes down while you're swimming? I guess I died. Weird. I did not expect that to happen. Hopefully it pulled... I don't know, we were able to swim, but it looks like we started sinking or something. And I died. Huh. You lose health while swimming. I don't know how I didn't notice that. Uh, those waypoints are definitely not spawn points, from what I can tell so far. They are 100% not spawn points. I think I keep all of my recipes, though, but I lost all... Did I lose all my items? I did. I lost everything, even the iron and whatnot. Shit, I should have just done it while I had the chance. Damn it! Oh, I'm frustrated with myself now. Um, that means we gotta kill a bunch more surters in order to get all the stuff that we had before. I don't know if our recipes stay unlocked, or if I've gotta refine the meteorite or whatever. Uh, that would be another fact that I'm absolutely not privy to. I think we keep all of our recipes, so it shouldn't be that big of a deal to get us back on the horse here, but um, we'll definitely want to pick up some things from around in order to make ourselves safe before we go any further into the game, I guess. I uh, don't know where it slapped me down. If the waystones are not respawn points, why are we activating them? It's got to be that when you activate them all, you get to go home or something. That's that's my inclination. That's what I'm thinking. I wanted to test this water thing, though, too. So when you're in the water... Oh, it's stamina base. That's how I did it. I tried to sprint swim across the entire thing, and I ran out of stamina, and I died. Okay. Makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. Gotcha. At least we've got a tower over here. Maybe this is the tower that we were swimming to. I don't even know if we can pick up our loot or anything later on in the game. Like Maybe there's like a little loot bag at the bottom. But uh, creating stone chests or something, or like little... Item receptacles might be a good idea in case we die so that like I don't think I'm gonna find Any of the places that we were at before the map seems pretty cumulatively large, but 
Damn. That sucks. Okay, well, build me a club first. Uh, that's all that I care about for right now. Give me a weapon so that I can fight this dude if I need to. And chances are I'm going to need to. Combat seems to happen in this game. I'd like to see the durability of the club brought up ever so slightly to, like, the same level that, uh... I don't know, maybe it's just supposed to be a makeshift weapon. But maybe up to the same... What was over here? It said I could pick something up. Oh, there's flint hiding right there. A little bit of flinty business happening. Okay. Now I got some more stones up there, but by and large, damn! That's a major loss, and now I just feel stupid. Because I was on the path to craft a forge and a whole bunch of other stuff, and now I just can't do it. I just can't do it. Uh, grab some stones... Make sure we have lots of those for the future. So I've got stone sitting around. We'll make our flint axe real fast so that we can get better volumes of wood. And let me see if maybe those were things that I could craft without access to iron and stuff like that. I don't know where we're going to be getting all these ores from, but I assume it's just we're going to kill a lot of those surter things. And we're going to get them from there. On the plus side, while I can run around, uh, the torch makes it so that you stay warm while you're out and about. So that actually increases our ability to explore and get into trouble by a considerable margin. So we just need to find certs around here. We need to get certified. We need to get out here and uh, sanctify some certs with a little bit of an ass whooping, and then we'll be good. I don't know if the torch lasts forever, but it's good enough for right now, and I ain't gonna complain about it. So let's go find some certs to fight. There should be some around here somewhere. I'll try to get the iron stacked on back up, and then we'll get back with it in the next episode, because I wanted to see what the next tier looked like. Um, if I can get the next tier set up, I think that's a pretty good plan. And so anyways, we know that there's more stuff in the game. I think this could be a pretty fun little set of exploration that we could do around here. It looks like there's another meteorite on that side, too. I wonder what the meteorites do. I'm a little interested in, like, what the meteorites actually mean in terms of gameplay. I mean, obviously, they put you into combat with certs to go and get them, and those things are capable of doing all kinds of damage and hurting you in all kinds of ugly ways. And so... Uh, there's one down. However, I'm on fire. Weirdly enough, being on fire... I'm gonna take that meteorite. Oh, it gives you iron. Okay. So that's why you need it. That makes sense, I guess. I need to stay out of the way of these things. Oh, my club broke. Alright, let me get my flint thing back up and running. But yeah, this is what I'm gonna be doing for the next little bit. Trying to farm out, uh some resources to make my life a little bit easier. I think if I can get these all set on fire, like if the certs can deal damage to them, we'll probably be okay. Like just get a little love tap in here or there. Yeah, they burn to death, so that's good to know. Oh, they hurt each other too. Ooh, interesting fact to know. Okay. Uh, yeah, give me the iron ore, give me the stone. Me everything I can get my hands on over here. I want all that stuff. Yep, I want it all. Kill this dude off, and in the next episode, hopefully, we'll be able to get ourselves set up with some pretty sweet stuff, all right? Oh, those little fog machines, they spawn the dwarves. I see it now. Oh. That actually makes a considerable lick of sense. Does this thing protect me at all from bad guys? Hold on a second. Ooh, it does. Ah, it creates a safe space. Oh, so that's what they do. So these will be locations where you more than likely want to build up your base and put them around the runestone because then you don't even need a campfire. I mean, I do. Don't get me wrong. I definitely need a campfire. But I wonder if this sets them on fire. I'm going to try. Oh, I can't swing it. Never mind. Oh, they run from me when I hold it too. Cool. We learned new things today. See, and that's what I like. There's experimentation, there's environmental effects that change the way stuff happens. Now that I know a torch keeps me alive at night and keeps the cold away, and it also drives away monsters, that means we can explore at night. Uh, this game is called Fed or Fed or Fed. I don't know how to say the name of the game. If you wanted to get it, I got a link for you down below. I will see you all later. If you like what I do here on the internet and you want to see more indie games, hit that like button. That's the best way to keep me in business. And then aside from that, in the next episode, hopefully we'll be able to do some iron works, and that'll be a lot of fun. All right? I do, and I will see you all later, everybody. A pretty good exploration episode, if I do say so myself. A little bit of a misstep, but we found some new things. We did some new stuff, and hopefully we're set up for an episode where we can do a whole lot of crafting next time. Bye, everybody.